Oh, strong woman at you again, again tonight. I told y'all I'd be back, but you know what? Right now, I feel like the Tin Man on on um the Wiz. You know the Wiz with Michael Jackson when he said, "I thought I have seen it all. I can't believe it's a lion with no courage." Y'all remember that part of the Wiz? His glasses, boy. That's how I feel right now. I feel like the Tin Man. I thought. I have seen it all. I thought I didn't see it all. What I'm about to show you guys, half you probably already seen it already. You saw it. I, I want y'all to take a deep breath because I thought I've seen it all at 54 years old. When I see it, 2024 was the year more and, and the year of um, truth, exposure. I didn't know it was going to happen the second day of the year. I didn't know it was going to be coming this fast. I'm getting nervous. I'm nervous. I'm going to show y'all something. What's wrong, folks? Have people went crazy? See, God exists. You know what God is doing, y'all? I'm, I'm convinced now. I am convinced. God is exposing these heathens in these churches. They've been getting away with this for a long time. You know, the ones that sit in church and they, they judge everybody and they bougie and, and God is going to send you to hell and the pastor's preaching. All them people all these years used to tell you you was going to hell. You know how they knew you might be going to hell? Because they got a free ticket. I don't even want to make this about church, y'all, but it won't stop. It won't stop. Let's go to it. Christian Life. I think this is the channel. This is just guy. He's called Christian Life. This is his channel. I tried to find this video on my own. But like I said, I'm not at home, so my son can't do my editing for me. So I can find it. So I have to show what it is on right now. It's called Christian Life. Show him some love. This is his content, but this is not his original video. This is public information. He just happened to have it on his channel. So I'm not stealing anything from him, but this must be shown. I don't care if I get paid for this or not. I want y'all to see this. Y'all got to see this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me show y'all. Christian Life Channel. Watch this. This is church. On New Year's Eve. Church. Don't y'all, don't y'all see. This is why y'all gotta wake up and stop being so spiritual. To be clear, the whole church is trash. <laughs> It takes a special amount of effort. Smart Living, that's his name. To be one of the worst pastors in America. As a matter of fact, it takes an awful lot of work for someone to consider your entire ministry and those around you to be trash. Not you personally as a person to be trash, but your ministry trash. Matter of fact, it takes a lot of work to even be the worst or one of the worst or considered to be one of the worst garbage trash ministries in Atlanta. Because remember who's there. Mr. 85%, I'm the man. So let me say to all of you who are here, and I'm finished. Before I go on, this is Pastor, uh, I don't like saying his name, Pastor Brian. He cheated on his wife, y'all, and left his congregation and went to Atlanta. He cheated on his wife with one of the choir members. So this is the sermon he was preaching after he cheated. I want you to know I'm still the man, 85%. Of Jesus' life, he was out of order. And this isn't just an Atlanta. Did y'all just hear him? Did y'all just hear Pastor Brian say 85% of Jesus' life, he was out of order? Did, 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 did I just hear that? You know why he preached that sermon? Because he was trying to justify him committing adultery. So he was trying to say, well, Jesus was out of order 85% 80, of his life. Oh, my God. I think, though Atlanta's got some problems with their pastors, 
But this has happened all over the world. And one person that just epitomizes what it means not to be the church, what it means to be worldly, is Bishop, I don't know why he calls himself Bishop, but Bishop William Murphy. By the way, former gospel singers tend to make horrible pastors, tend to be worldly. And that's what we have here. I have to keep stopping this because I can't play music on here without getting flagged. But I'm going to silence it so y'all can't hear it. They are dancing off worldly music. Do this look like, for real, don't this look like a concert? Do this look like church to y'all a concert? But I'm going to have to put it on mute because I don't want to get flagged on, on YouTube. Let me let y'all hear just a few minutes of it so y'all can hear what they're dancing off of. <laughs> It's going to be hard to get to this video and show bits and clips and so forth without getting a copyright claim because this particular pastor decided that it would be a good thing to have secular music played and not just any old secular music. Listen to what he's, what he's got going on and you tell me, is this godly? Is this representative of a Christian leader? <laughs> I can't play that music. Again, the child is innocent. We pray and hope that the child ends up getting away from that sort of mentality and that the Lord will put his hand on this child. But the fact that you would give approval to this homosexual union, this lesbian union. Hold up. What I miss? Hold on, y'all. I missed something. Hold on. He, we missed something. Let me go back. I just missed something. I don't know what it was. Going on, and you tell me, is this godly? Is this representative of a Christian leader? <laughs> Why, why are we worried about it? We shouldn't be even picking. This is you're trying to get people off the streets in the church to kind of enjoy it. But the problem is, you give approval to what's going on, and you have no idea if you are young in the ministry, young in the faith, or immature. You'll see this kind of stuff, and you think it's okay. Paul speaks of such people in Romans one, speaking about homosexuality and a lot of other things, a whole host of other things that people do that's ungodly. And notice what he says in verse 32, and this is certainly William Murphy. He says, and although they know the ordinances of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. And the reason why this is even relevant, even more so, because this is the same William Murphy that gave approval to two lesbians with a child to christen that child. <laughs> Oh, this the brat and her wife. Again, the child is innocent. We pray and hope that the child ends up getting away from that sort of mentality and that the Lord put his hand on this child. But the fact that you would give approval to the... Yes, Miss Talbert, that is Jamil Bryant. Yes, ma'am. He said Jesus was out of order 85% of his life, and he justified why he was cheating. Ain't that something? <laughs> and a minute ago, I'm sorry, I was choking. I think I'm choking. That was the uh, rapper, the brat, and um, Judy, her wife. The Christian, smart Christian life channel stating they out of order christening that baby with two women that's married because it's out of God's order. That's what he was saying. This homosexual union, this lesbian union, that's a problem. But again, this is what the Bible says of someone like him, and that person is headed to hell. So put it away. There were two things God told me you need to do, Curtis. Tracy, okay? There were two things. He said, number one, you got to watch the prophet. You don't never know when he's going to prophesy. The second thing he said, if this going to be a leap year and not a bad year, he said, you got to work the prophecy. The prophecy was stand up. Walk. If, if 
if I was in the club. So when you hear that, let's you know that he's getting ready to do or someone's getting ready to do or say something that is reminiscent of the club. Before we go to what he says and what he does, let's just see what the world says about being in the club or what the club says. Whatever. We're told not to have any sort of fellowship with the world. What fellowship does light have with darkness? However, you got someone that wants to make it seem like it's cool, like it's okay. Well, what happens when you've got little children there? Okay, like I said, I had to keep stopping. Um, that's how you two want us to do reaction videos. But did you hear what he just said? We are not to have fellowship with the world when you're not in the world. So all of you people that's fighting for T.D. Jake saying there's nothing wrong with him going to Diddy's party, he just gave you scripture. You didn't even get that from me. You got it from Christian Life Channel. You're not supposed to be of the world when God pulls you out. I don't mean little children necessarily in age, but those who are in age young children, but what about even those who are young in the faith? Jesus makes a statement about little children, but it certainly also applies to adults who you cause to stumble. He says, but whoever caused one of these little ones uh, who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around, around his neck and drown. It would have been better if him and those involved would have just had a heavy millstone hung around their neck and thrown wow. in the ocean. It's not my word, it's his. Because what he's doing is He's teaching people who those who either are saved and are just immature, those who aren't saved and think they are, or those who don't care about being saved to think that it's okay to put the label of a Christian on and live like the world, and you cause them to stumble. And what does Jesus say should happen? Y'all, I ain't never really been to the club. What does that mean? I've never really been to the club. I've been a few times. I haven't been late. I haven't been late, but I've been. I've been. I've been a few times. It's been a while. I have an idea. It, when you see him, if he hadn't been to one really in a while, he certainly knows what it's like to be at a club. Oh, I feel so judged. You felt that come over the room? Just... Look at somebody say, you got to work the prophecy. You got to work the prophecy. Come on, look at him again. Say, you got to work the prophecy. You got to work the prophecy. This year, you got to stand up. You got to walk it out. It's as though he wants to fit a song that maybe he likes. So he's been, somebody had, had an idea. And I really want to put this in. So I like this song. Well, the problem before we go to what he does, what, what happens to the church, the Bible says just, or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, the deal is, you've got to have a renewing, a renewed mind. That's right. I don't think that we see that here with anyone. And it's almost as though that the entirety of the church, which tells us how absolutely trash and garbage this ministry is. And I'm saying trash and garbage for a reason, because it is. That might be harsh, but hey, harsh is okay if it's the truth. And what he is doing, he is mingling, trying to mingle right. things of God with, with the, world. the world. And the fact of the matter is that these people in this church are more than happy to indulge in it, more than happy to embrace this worldly idea, this worldly set of values that just bring to the church. He's going to show the video in a minute of them dancing off, walking out on New Year's Eve. Now, listen what he just said. The whole congregation is for this worldly song. That is the song of the world. Work, work it out. Work it out. Y'all know that song? That song was made for clubs in the world. That's not a church song. And he's going to play it, and it's like they had a concert, and they're all going to be dancing. And the whole congregation is with him because he's the pastor. And that is what's going on today with T.D. Jakes. All of his followers following behind him and fighting tooth and nails for him and forgetting what God said. They forgetting what God said and they following man and will argue with you and say you don't know the word and take your hands off God's anointing. Are these people crazy? Do they know what they're doing? They just curse their life. Because the moment the music cues up and plays, they're ready to go. No no one wants to, as he says, walk it out. No one wants to walk out of the church. They want to just have fun in a worldly fashion in the church. Oh, I feel so judged. 
That's how we going out of here tonight. Wow. Look at your neighbor say, walk it out. And they saying it. They trying to act like they don't know what you're referring to. Look at them and tell them, walk it out. I ain't gonna play the music. Look at these women. They were more than ready to do this. It's almost like they came ready. Wow. Ready to, ready to get into it. I can't keep. Sh Look at this. Look. <sighs> he just. This is. This will be one of his favorite sermons. This will go down. Man, didn't we have a good time? And people that also came. Same thing. The folks that, that may be visiting, the folks that are members there, wow, what could, I like this church. Man, we could bring your own drinks too, probably. He said, where y'all at? And in shame. Y'all too saved for me. What? But now that's not the only song oh. they want to go through. They want to, let's, let's go through some of the other songs. Let's just make this not just one song. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's do it right. And so let's also make sure, let's run to the front. Let everybody see me, let the pastor see me. Matter of fact, because the pastor's going to join in, I want to be like him. I don't know what the words are to this song. I'm not even going to look them up. Because. Yeah. But how does it come across? How does it look? And again, I may have to alter some of the sound just so that YouTube or whomever else doesn't hit, hit a, gets with a copyright strike or a claim. And so we want to be careful about that. But They might as well play Poison. The world is poison. They might just... Can't trust a big butt and a smile. They might as well play all the worldly songs and turn them into church songs then. You know what I'm saying? Smile prerogative. Well, why not play all the songs? I, I'm tripping. I know y'all tired of me talking, but I'm really lost for words right now. I, my mouth is on the floor. And I have to keep stopping it. This is what I have to do for YouTube. This should not be going on in the church. This should not be happening. This should not be this, this party atmosphere. What should they be doing? There should be some sort of reverencing of the Lord, I would think. But because you're like James, and James says, do not be friends of the world. You have done friendship with the world means that you are enemies. You have hostility towards God. I don't think that he cares about that. I think that he wants to have a good time. I think that it's okay. Because remember, he's a pastor who thinks that a lot of worldly things that happen are okay. Again, such as him blessing the LGBTQ community because we shouldn't judge who someone should marry. I have to believe in same-sex marriage. I don't have to believe in it. But what I do believe is I don't have a right to tell you who you can and cannot marry. Look at somebody tell him. What did he just say? Okay, isn't he the man of the cloth? He is responsible for your soul and your salvation. He is your spiritual leader. This is what he's supposed to do, direct you in the right way into scriptures, to teach you right from wrong. Am I tripping? Is that not what a pastor is for? Otherwise, why are you going? Why are you going to church if that's not his job? Somebody please tell me what's going on here. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Church folk want to, y'all kill me, because y'all some of the most nasty, freakiest, sex havingous, illegal sex havingous folk I know. And want to make this about righteousness. That's why people not joining church, because they know how fake we are. Now, for whatever reason, he... Now, that's the realest thing he just said. That is the realest thing he just said. Nasty, freakiest, fake, liars. That is the realest thing he just said. He's talking about his own congregation and don't even realize it. This man had to used to ride a little bus. Because they say this is uh, Pastor Gino Jenkins. Is his last name Jenkins? Jennings? Jennings. They said that is his cousin. 
desires not to be holy. He desires not to leave anyone into holiness. And let me just read this passage. The writer of Hebrews says that pursue peace with all people and holiness. And I want to use the King James, the, the New King James Version. King James Version the same thing. Uh, with holiness, without such, no one will see the Lord. Not that you're going to be perfect. Not that you're going to be completely holy in the sense that you do nothing wrong or, or think anything wrong. No. But you're trying to indulge in it. You are intentionally moving in that direction and leading others there. How then can they see God? Which indicates a level, which happens to indicate to us whether the person happens to be saved or not. If they are saved, they're not very mature. That part is understood. Now, let's also remember this is the person that decided that uh, having an abortion is okay. He's okay with that. I shouldn't tell a woman what to do with her body. I shouldn't, and the government should be involved in telling them. He's wearing a shirt that says, women have rights too. Well, babies have rights too. But more than that, us as believers, we don't have rights. As believers, our rights left, and we put our total trust, our total faith, our total allegiance in what the Lord says. What he says is what we do, what we think, what we believe. And some people will say, well, Bishop, you're a man of God. Are you pro-abortion? I am pro-human and civil rights. But we want to legislate. We li Listen, we cannot legislate morality. That's, that's why the church is in existence. That's why there's a separation of church and state. That, that, that's why the church, the church legislates morality. The government legislates the law of God. I have no idea what he's talking about, about the government legislates the law of God. They do not. The church <laughs> lets folks know what the law of God is and how we should live. And in terms of... This man just said the government legislates the law of God. Not him as a leader. The government. What is he talking about? And these are the churches that you join, give all your money to, and cuss people out if they say something about your pastor. Do you see he have a mega church? Do y'all see how many followers, nope, 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 cult members that's in his church? Not one person I seen get up and walk out when he started doing that walk it out. Do you know I would have ran up out of that church thinking a ball of fire was fit to hit it? I would have been running out that church. They got in the front and was dancing with each other like at the club. You know why they're doing that. Let me tell you why the pastor is welcoming people of the world in the church. This is why T.D. Jakes was going to have a church. Now I see, now I see what kind of church T.D. Jakes and, and P. Diddy was going to have. It was going to be like that. And it's going to say, oh, we bringing the sinners to church. No, you bringing sin into the church and it becoming the world. Y'all didn't forget about the word. They doing that for money. They accepting everything that go against the Bible for money. It's more money than pleasing a sinner than pleasing God. Because if we get the sinners in here and we let them do what they want to do, they're going to give us money. Because now they're going to come to church and feel like they're doing something because the church is reminding them of the party. You know, I'm going to go to the party on Saturday night and I'm going to keep the party going on Sunday morning because we go going to work it out at church. Really, y'all? Legislate morality. We're not legislate morality. We are pointing people to what God says is right. A path should do so, which is why I say that his entire ministry and the church that he that he leads, the entire congregation is just trash. It is garbage. Not the people. Make, make no mistake about what I'm saying. I'm not saying the people are trash, though I do believe that every single one of us, even the best yes, they are. Five dollars worth of dirt. That's it. On a good day. And that's only because we have the Holy Spirit. That's the only value that we have is the Holy Spirit. But after that, pretty much worthless. worthless pretty much worthless, rubbish, trash, as Paul says, and we should not leave people to act More people, like more money, Miss Sugar Mama. This Absolutely. Is horrible in every sort of way. His ministry is horrible in every sort of way. And I'm only using ministry and church loosely but just for a point of reference because he's, well, I guess it is a ministry, a ministry all to himself, to serve himself, to rich himself, to make himself become uh, popular, to make himself relevant, 
Um, let's find some former rapper, uh, some celebrity, what have you, and endorse their same-sex marriage. Uh, let's also find some clear heretic who at one point in time was famous, but then decided that uh, the Bible is not real, the Bible is not true, there is no hell, and everybody can go to heaven who dies. Let's go ahead and make sure that we show some support for him. Let me look at the camera so y'all can hear me. I ain't scared of none of y'all. The church was wrong for how we handle Carlton Pierce. And so you would support them and you support everything ungodly. Carson Pierce. This man, and anyone that goes to this church, anyone that knows anyone that goes to this church, I think it's the Atlanta Dream Center. It's not a true church. If you go to that church, you might want to check your yes. heart. You might want to discover and find out if indeed you are a Christian. Because it's hard to imagine a person being at that church, watching this person, listening to this person, comparing what he says with the scripture. That is indeed if you do open your Bible read for yourself or do you let him tell you what it is. Right. It's hard to imagine a person with the Holy Spirit, with the Bible, listening to him and not concluding that this is not godly and then staying. That would be hard to imagine. So if you're still there, there's a, there's a high probability that you are not saved. Hate to say it, someone say you. Who are you to judge? I don't know you, but I'm just going off off of your leadership. I'm going off what the man is saying and judging the fact that you can sit up under there and not find any fault with that, but stay there and right. enjoy it and probably even promote it. Yeah. So at some point in time, it's not just him; it's those that are following because you can blame the person that led you into the ditch, but at some point in time, you're also responsible for following them into the ditch. And so, yeah, when I said this person, William Murphy who calls himself a bishop, that his whole ministry is trash. That's exactly what I mean. And that's the best thing that I can say about it. Looks like by denture, but it's... Okay, y'all. <laughs> what's y'all thoughts on that? Please tell me what's y'all thoughts on what y'all just watched. Some of you already... Um, <laughs> knew about the video i didn't i i was sitting here doing some studying and i ran across it i said what is that what is christian life and i pushed it and i was standing there froze like am i in the twilight zone am i seeing what i'm seeing this can't be real I wouldn't dare go to a church just playing walking out. You know what that I, I remember that song on um what's that movie? Dang, what's that movie? It had Chris Brown in it. It had Megan Good in it. And he he competed against the dude at the party and he was doing walk it out. Y'all know what movie I'm talking about. That's the last time I heard that song. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these uh, holier-than-thou people. I'm far from being all the way in. God is working on me in a lot of ways. But I just refuse to go to these churches now. And everybody say, don't let these heathens keep you from church. Show me a church that ain't full of heathens. Why would I want to go and see? next to a heathen why would I want to go sit next to someone who have demonic energy on them just because you call it church I might as well go down on the corner where they selling crack rock and just stand next to them then because you ain't getting no difference in the church no more so you, these people in the church ain't no different than the ones down there selling crack rock or selling they behind. They ain't no difference. Yes, the church is full of sick people. I know the church is full of sick folks and you go there to get healed. But dang it, how you going to get healed when your pastor's sick? How you going to get healed when your pastor is not even preaching out the word? They motivational speakers. They don't know more than I do. Like he just said. How can you be a child of God and you reading the word right here? You reading what it say. This is an abomination. You can't do this. You can't do that. And your pastor getting in front of you say, yes, you can. 85% of God's life, Jesus' life, he was messed up. And you looking like, wasn't he perfect? A pastor said it. I believe it. Mm -hmm. My pastor said it. 
You a heathen for going against my pastor. My, my pastor can go to freak off parties. He's just a man. Did y'all just hear Jam Jamal Bryan or Jamel? What see, y'all get mad when I say people's names wrong. But see, somehow God ain't even letting me say their name right. I said, what's his name? Clefro? Cle Clefo? Cletus Dollar. I don't give a dang what his name is. Clepo. Klepto. Whatever his name is. Y'all want to check me. You said his name right. He, nobody care about his real name. And I may be saying it on purpose. Pastor Brian, this man have done the most several times and still have a whole lot of people behind him with his funny, his voice just irritates me. And I am just a man. Okay, we know that. And I'm just a woman, but I can't go around doing anything I want to do. You can't use that for excuse. They're just a man. God will put affliction on you before you leave here. And I'm going to give y'all an example. Mm-hmm. Um, I am just losing my train of thought. Oh, my God. Jesse Jackson. Pastor Jesse Jackson. That's what I'm trying to think of. Pastor Jesse. Do y'all see what he going through right now? He has, I think, Alzheimer's. I think that's what he has. He messed up. He shake. He really don't know. He go in and out. He's suffering before he leave here. Do y'all remember he cheated on his wife with his secretary? And he said the exact same thing as Pastor Brian. I'm just a man. And God just put an affliction on you before you leave here. And that same woman that you cheated on probably the one got to change your diapers right now. That is not an excuse. I'm a man in the flesh. No, you're the man of the cloth. That's why you went to the church to heal from the sickness of the world. You can't get in that pool pit and get money. You are getting paid to protect and guide. You a teacher. You a doctor. You a friend. You a counselor. You're getting paid to be different from us. This is why you're up here. You a doctor in the field. Like when you go to the hospital and a doctor do surgery on you, you want that doctor to know what they're doing with your body. Can't nobody off the streets do surgery on you and say, I'm a doctor? He have to go to school and learn how to operate because he is held up here. He has your life in his hands. So he got to be a professional. He can't say, oops, I cut the wrong leg off. I'm just a man. I cut the wrong leg off. Jesus, please forgive me. Now I got to cut the bad leg off. Now you ain't got no legs. But I'm just a man. No, a doctor got to know what they're doing. You're sick in the head. Head, if you sit here and justify what you just saw, you're sick and you're going to hell. And I promise you this. I said I'm going to go block nobody else, but I'm going to tell you all this. When I read these comments in a minute, because I ain't going to read them right now. When I read these comments in a minute and one person on here justify that. One person say something negative about my God. One. I'm deleting you because I do not want your demonic spirits on my channel wishing demonic ill will on me. Some people you got to cut off because they demonic spirits. They snakes. I don't want you to watch my channel. I don't want you to like my content. I don't want you to give me no money. I don't want no parts of you. Because I don't deal with demonic spirits. Okay, I got enough demons within myself to get my own life right. I ain't for to deal with yours. That's what your pastor's supposed to be doing, helping you become delivered in certain ways. This is not the channel to deliver you. But yet I get all these demonic church folks. When people say, that's blasphemy, Nina, you be cursing and talking about scripture. You know why? I get so angry and I got to pray when I do that because I be want to cuss out these church people. I be really want to cuss out these church people because I remember how y'all treat folks. I remember how church folks try to act like they were so holy. You couldn't tell a church woman nothing. 
Who, how many of y'all got them holier than that thou aunties and grandmamas and cousins? You hate to go around them. You going to hell. Oh, girl, God go get you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, you a heathen. And they keep a more hell in the church, at school, at work, and in the family than anybody else. Did I tell y'all one years ago, when I was in my 20s, I was a server. I was a server at this buffet place when I was in my 20s. My car had just broke down. So I was catching a taxi to this job because I needed to fix my car. It was the second job. I took it. Do y'all know the worst crowd of the week was the Sunday church folks? The worst crowd of the week was the church folks on Sunday at the church. At the church. They come in there with their Sunday flock on, with the big church hats. The pastor sitting at the head of the table. And they kept up more hell up in that restaurant on Sundays. I used to hate to work Sundays. We used to have to have a meeting before the restaurant opened and said, Y'all know it's Sunday. Y'all better pray. Because you know what we got to deal with. And I was so embarrassed because it was my people. I was so embarrassed. It was these white folks telling us y'all have to pray because y'all know these church folks would come here and act a fool. And I'm sitting there like, let me see one member from my church in here acting crazy. I'm going to show out. They come in there. Y'all remember Ryan's, the buffet, they got the good rolls and, the, and the, um, the butter. Um, Excuse me. Excuse, this, this, these are the church women. Excuse me. Can we get like four basket of rolls, fresh, please, no brown, and fresh butter? And, and we want the pastor to have his own. Can someone serve the pastor? No, we can't. This is a buffet. Um, can, can you can you please give us um something to drink? We want the uh the, the glasses right here. We want the water right here. And then you come bring the steak. Oh, this steak ain't right. You got a little blood in it. I said no blood. Okay, I take that back. You know you ain't gonna get no tip. You, you, you served my pastor the wrong food. Can't you go get this? Can't you go get that? Can't you do this? And uh, where's your manager? You done pissed me off this all day until they leave. Complain, complain, complain. These are church folks. And guess what else they would do? They would destroy your whole area. Work the hell out of you for about two or three hours. And don't leave you nothing. Nothing. Some churches would, but most of them would leave you one dollar. After you done gave this pastor all this money before you got here, and you see us hardworking young folks trying to make a living, and y'all treat us like slaves and don't leave one dollar. But you so saved. Heathens, man. I can't do it no more. I told y'all this is the year of exposure. My God is working. It's only January the 2nd. January the 2nd. And already... The devil is being exposed, y'all. Well, we got 65, 40, 363 days left of the year. Woo, we about to get it. People go shock the heck out of you. 300, I said that, right? 365 days in a year, and we got two. We didn't did already. We got 363 days for people to be exposed. So be ready for me to make probably four or five videos a day because that's how it's about to come. This is one video. It's a whole lot. I was going to do a whole nother video. I was on studying and taking notes on a whole nother video about Tyler Perry. Yeah, Tyler. I was on a video about Tyler Perry. I'm going to do it. In the morning, I might come back tonight, but I'm just overwhelmed. I, I, I didn't got overheated. It feel like I'm having a hot flash. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I gotta pray. Look, I, I feel like I got chills, man. I gotta get the spirit off of me because this ain't right. It ain't right. And I'm so glad that my parents is gone that they don't have to see this. I am so glad that they're not here to see this. They would be so disappointed. In the church. <laughs> the church I, I grew up in, y'all, 45 years in Columbus, Michigan. I ain't going to say the name. A lot of people that's from Michigan, or, or if you just Google it, you will see it. Back in 2000, I think in 
10, it was a whole uproar in the church. I didn't know what had happened, right? I had missed a few Sundays. So I go to church with my family. I'm sitting up in the balcony, and the pastor crying. And he keep asking for forgiveness, which, you know, that's the right thing to do when you do wrong. And I said to my kid's dad, who I was with at the time, I said, why he keep asking for forgiveness? Why is he crying? What happened? What did we miss? Come to find out. And I love this pastor. He was given the church before my parents passed away from the pastor we was under for 45 years. Okay. My pastor got sick and he ended up dying. Before he died, he gave the church to him. This man knew the word and my parents loved him. He would set your soul on fire with the word. Still, he still know that word. Well, somewhere down the line, someone gave him the authority of the credit card of the church. Allegedly. This, this is what they said happened. He took the credit card and he misused it. Allegedly, he was paying for strippers. He was buying Victoria's Secret for women. He just did all kind of stuff. And allegedly... He cheated on his wife because she's a plus-size woman and Victoria's Secret didn't have her size. And allegedly, she found out in court. Yeah, he ended up in court, almost went to the feds. Because the church ended up separated down the middle. Because you got to remember, we have a lot of members that have been there all their life. And the pastor daughters were still running the church. Okay? We have people been there as long as my parents following this pastor way before I was even thought of. So, yes, you have to answer to these people. So, you know what? They pressed charges. They called the federal government in. They had a fist fight, y'all, a riot in the church. They were throwing down in the church, fighting, kicking shoes, scratching, pulling hair, till the feds had to, they had to come in and put padlocks on the church that I grew up in. I said, oh, my God, I am so thankful my parents ain't here to see this. They're not here to see this. My mama and dad would have had a heart attack. They put padlocks on the church, and the pastor had to go through a trial. People was threatening to shoot him. It was all on the news. They had deacons on the city radio station talking about he's tricking with hook hookers. And I'm like, I know who that deacon is. I know his voice. What? It was going down. It got bad. We were the talk of the state, not the city. The whole state, we was the talk. A high prestigious honorable church went down the drain because somebody had greed. And guess what else? It wasn't just the pastor. The treasurer, um, the deacons was involved. It was, it was about 12 people that almost went to prison. That was helping steal money from the church. You know the person that count the money. To, is it the treasurer? She was stealing. She got in front of the, the, the church. And said please forgive me for taking money from God. I'm looking like. Who just steal money from church? Even though you asking for forgiveness. What kind of person steal money from the church basket? What is wrong with these people? So to make a long story short, they closed the church doors. They opened them back up. They kicked that pastor out. He ended up opening another church across town. He doing well. He took half the members with him and the other half stayed. So the church got split in half. Now we got pastors coming from everywhere into the church that my mother and father only knew as home. I haven't been in that church since that day. I haven't stepped in that church since that day that pastor asked for forgiveness. I refuse to go in that church. And I grew up in that church. I'm like, no, I can't do it no more. I can't do it. And I'm going to tell you one more story real quick. When my mother died, my mother was in a senior choir. My mother was a member of that church 45, 46 years. 
She was in all the plays. The funny lady, they used to give her a part in the play and just say, just do you. They didn't even give her a script. Just do you. She was the funny lady. She was the hat lady. She could dress her butt off. Everybody knew my mama. Everybody knew my mother. Now, when my dad died two years before my mother, oh, they smothered her with love and cards. And they, they showed up for my mother. But when my mother died, everything was on me, right? I didn't get a cup of Kool-Aid from the church. They didn't give me a card. Because they know my mama was big mama. My mama would have went off about them not doing nothing for her husband. But when it's on me, they didn't do nothing. Everything came out of my pocket. Everything I did came out of my pocket. The repath, they didn't help me with nothing. I had a repath at my house. And this is why they did it. My father fell down in 2007 in July at his job. He was 82 years old. And he had been working all his life. He had retired from his profession. He had been there almost 50 years. He was driving my mother crazy. And I was working at Burlington Coal Factory at the time. And I said, well, mama, I can get him a job with me. We need a maintenance man. My daddy was a carpenter, a master carpenter like Jesus. He could, had a keen eye. He was the bomb. So I tell my job, my father need a job. He didn't drove my mama crazy. He retired. and they, He don't want to be at home. So they hired my father. And I told him, when you hire my daddy, he'll be the first one at work, probably the last one to leave. And when you say it's his lunchtime, he won't his lunchtime. My father, he goes strictly by time. He's a military man. He fought in the war, World War II. Don't play with my daddy. He don't play with you. Okay? My father was there 15 years after his retirement. He was 82 years old. He was at work June the 28th. My mother begged him don't go this day because he didn't feel good. She said, Jim, you don't look like you feel good. Don't go to work. My father had almost, I think, three months of vacation pay he never used. She said, just use some of your sick days of vacation. He would miss a day. He go to work. He end up there with the manager when they opened the doors. He told the managers he's going to sit up front and as the employees come in, he was going to open the doors for the employees. He was early. On the camera, because I had to watch the camera, me and my sister. My mother couldn't watch it. My father sat up on the checkout lane. And he was swinging his legs. He was waiting for someone to come in. And all of a sudden, I noticed him dozing off. Now, my mother just told him he didn't look good. He started dozing off. And he fell backwards. He went over just like this, head first. Neck went. So, on camera, he laid there for about 10 minutes before anybody noticed. The manager happened to look up at the camera and she noticed my father was on the ground up front. So, her and some other people who had came in, they come running up front. They grabbed my father and they start playing tug of war. Jim, Jim, this is an 82-year-old man. His head doing this. My mother get a call, say he fell, and they rushed him to the hospital. By the time I got the call, my mother going crazy. I, I, I get up there, and my daddy just, he looked normal. He was talking, but he kept saying, my neck hurts so bad. My neck hurt. So they did an x-ray on my dad, right? I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. This is a testimony. <sighs> My father's spine had collapsed. He didn't have a spine. That's why his neck was hurting. My father was paralyzed from the neck down. All he could move was his eyes. The strong man I know that fought in World War II, came back without a scratch, was paralyzed from his neck down. He couldn't move his fingers, toes, nothing. All he can do is this. And talk. Do y'all know Burlington Coal Factory had their CEOs fly in that day? That day. I'm thinking they coming to show my mama some love. Because this is a man that gave them 15 and a half years after retirement. Do you know what they said to my mama when she was sitting there watching her husband of 50 years paralyzed? You know you can't sue because 
Michigan law, when you own the clock, it's workman's comp, so you can't sue our company. I had to curse them rich white folks out and put them out the hospital. I almost went to jail. That's all y'all can say to my mama. That's all y'all think of my father after 15 years. That he can't sue y'all. You should be coming and saying, we're going to take care of everything, Miss Mayberry. Don't worry about nothing. That ain't what they said. We had to hire Sam Bernstein and fight for two years because my father died after 45 days. His organs started collapsing. And he still, when he was on the deathbed, on his deathbed, you know, my father still wanted to go back to work. That's why I understand these young folks that don't want to work. My father was paralyzed. They so just push a wheelchair up in there. Let me sit up there and be a greeter. I can't sit here and not work. That's all I know. I've been working since I was in the sixth grade. He perished and died. Okay. And the pastor that I said was of that church that happened. He used to go up there because my mom and dad loved him. This was before this happened at the church. He would go up there and he would pray over my father and preach and give him, you know, read scripture. And every Sunday he'd go back to church and he said, you know what's crazy? He said, I would go up there and try to encourage Brother Mayberry and he would encourage me. He said, that man know the Bible inside out. I would leave there crying and I'm the pastor. He said, not only that, he has a wife. That got a bed in his room and she laid at the bottom of her bed so she can see his face and they can talk because he couldn't move. That's real love. That's how my parents was. She, well, she was there every moment. But I say this to say, I was raised very well in the church. And my father taught me right from wrong. My mother taught me right from wrong. So when I'm speaking about God, y'all, I don't know everything, but I know when something's not right. So it keeps me from going to church. For all of you saying, don't let these heathens keep you from church, mm -mm. I ain't there no more. I can't do it no more. And I want to cry right now because church used to be the safe place. Church was the place you can run when the world didn't make sense. You can go to the altar and put your face on the ground and pray. Help me, Father. You'll hear that music and it just lighten you up. The pastor will preach a sermon and you know, you feel like he's talking just to me. That's what I'm going through. But now all they preach about is prosperity and money. You leave out of there confused. Like, dang, did I just, was I just fed something? You leave out of there empty. The music is club music now. Y'all seen Kurt Franklin rolling around like he was Chippendale stripper? You don't even feel the same in church. You can get as much love and what you need at a club now because the club is in the church. When God said, come as you are, ladies, that don't mean go put on some jeans can come as a prostitute, a crackhead, a, a, a homeless person. Come as you are on the inside. That don't have nothing to do with clothes. That's something else y'all lie about. God said come as you are. No, you got more clothes in your closet. Cause, so that's not how you are. Now, if that's all you have, yeah. But you wearing your street clothes up in God's house. And making excuses. God said, come as you are. Then you in the front row like this. And this is why Jamal, Jamal Bryant and Deidre had it. If I'm saying their name right, if I'm not, I don't care. This is why they cheated on their wives and married somebody else in the congregation. Because them the women that was up front like this. Y'all took first lady husband. Now you the first lady. And you proud to be first lady like you ain't going to the pit of hell for what you did. But I had to share that story about my father because he was such an honorable man. He taught me about God. He gave me the, the fear of God. He put that in me. He loved our pastor, you know, and he had faith till the day he died. Even when he was on his deathbed, he said, God will must be done. I won't complain. And that's what I played at his funeral. I won't complain. My father never complained. No matter what he was going through, he never complained. And my father told me he'd been through hell. 
He lived in the jungle for 18 months in the war, fighting a war he didn't even know what he was fighting for. He watched his best friend get his head blown off when he promised his mama best friend across the street, which was her son, when they left on the train to go to the war, I promise you I'll bring him back. When he pulled up on that train and my grandmother seen my father, because you know back in the war you couldn't send letters and when you did they'd black out when you saying something like, it's hell or we not eating. or They blacked that out so your mamas won't read it. So when my daddy got off that train and hugged his mama, he looked at his mama's best friend. He put his head down, and she knew her son wasn't coming back. I had an honorable father that taught me the difference, y'all. So I'm not a heathen like y'all think I am. I might not know the word as well as I should. Shame on me for that. Because I'm 54, I should be able to spit scriptures. And I'm learning it. I'm asking God to give it to me, Lord. I, can I put it in my mouth? I, I feel like just eating the pages of the Bible. Just put it in me because I'm hungry for it. I want to give it to the people. People perishing. I'm tired of my people being broke. I'm tired of my folks not owning nothing. I'm tired of us being the bottom of the totem pole getting talked about. I'm tired of seeing girls on Section 8 welfare and food stamps. Someone just said the other day I'm talking about low-income people. I'm not talking about low-income people because I was one. I'm talking about I want my sisters and brothers to have abundance. And that system is set up to keep you poor. If you're on the system right now and you listening to my voice, do me a favor. Write a plan down right now. 30 months. That's what I did when I just went through something. 30 months. That's two and a half years. To get off. Make a plan right now today and give yourself 30 months to get off. You don't want to live like that. It's a whole big world out there. Have you never took your kids out the neighborhood? Disney World is not a dream. Disney World in Florida. You can drive to Disney. And these kids never even seen Mickey Mouse. But I bet they got a, a dozen of Jordans in their closet. Do you know it's better to give people experience than things? For example... Name something that you got. Name some clothes that you got for school when you was in the sixth grade. You might remember a few things, but you hardly ever remember anything or you got for Christmas. You don't remember that stuff, but you know what you will remember? Name a family trip you went on. Name a vacation. You remember the details. You remember what people said in the car. You remember the laughers. You remember who messed it up. You remember everything about that trip. You remember experience. You don't remember things. I'm asking y'all for real. I'm for real. Change today the way you've been thinking. The only way you can change your life if you change your mind. And it's not in them kind of churches. If you in one of them churches, you better get out and run. Because God is giving you warning. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. That, oh my God. that is Sodom and Gomorrah. It reminds me of when... Um, Dang, I can't remember names. See how the devil played with me? Help me out, y'all. Um, Noah was building the ark. Do y'all remember the story about Noah and the ark? Just don't that church, what I just showed y'all, don't y'all, don't that remind you of Noah's ark when he was building the ark and he was warning the people a flood was coming? They was laughing and partying, thinking he's stupid. He's stupid. What is he talking about? He crazy. And they died in the flood. He was warning the people, God is coming. God is coming. He mad. No, we're crazy. You know that's the crazy man next door. Look what he building that big old boat in his backyard. He's stupid as hell. They laughing and Noah warning them. People warning you right now, come out of there. God is mad and he's about to return with a vengeance. And if you don't run up off them churches, man, I'm telling you, you're going to hell with your pastor. I can't even tell you what church is good no more. It is hard to decipher. And that's sad when you got to pick and choose and, and depict and listen and, and seek and find who the right pastor, who not. I just tell you this. Get your Bible, read and show yourself approved. 
study at home. Study at home. Ask God to show you and give you scriptures. Ask God to put the shield of armor on you every day when you leave your house. And just study at home with your family and your friends. Have Bible study in your dining room. Go back to old school. Go back to praying with your family again. You ain't got to go out here in this wicked world and, 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 and um, have communion with these folks. Because it's hard to try to figure out who's right and who's wrong. It's hard. This is not even what my YouTube channel was supposed to be about, y'all. I had no clue when I started YouTube that it was this wicked. Because I didn't used to watch YouTube like that. I used to Google about how to make money and how to do Shopify. Because I used to sell online. And I get off. When I joined YouTube... All this demonic stuff started coming to me. And I started doing celebrity news. It got thrown at me. I could care less about celebrities. But it got thrown at me. Now I'm stuck in that, in that whim. Because when I tried to get out about a month ago, God was like, no, I need you. I know they're going to say, God didn't tell you nothing. Yeah, they say sometimes it's your own mind. You know, your own voice. Maybe it was my own voice. I need you. I need you to... To say it in a different form. Everybody else just reporting the news. Now I need you to give it to them in a different way. I want you to add a little bit of me up in there. So people can see what, what's really going on in Hollywood. People trying to get in Hollywood. When folks trying to get out. Y'all sound like a person running in a burning building. I'm running in the burning building. When people running out the burning building. If you're trying to be an actor, model, singer, rapper. Something wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. People running out of that burning building. It's going down. Fast. God is not playing. Every single day we go here. I'm telling you, this year, every single day for the next 330, 363, wait, wait, I'm saying it wrong. 365 days, 363 days left of the year. Every single day, I promise you, something going to be revealed. Something going to be revealed that's going to blow our mind. First of all, have you ever thought about how we live in a nation, a country, that the president, ex-president, can be under 12 indictments, done several things, and haven't went to jail yet, and still able to run to be a president? And it's people that has misdemeanors can't even get a job at Speedway. Felons can't even rent a certain apartment complexes. But the president can be under 12 indictments and say on national TV he grabbing people cuckoos. He can order folks to run in the Capitol building. And he still can run for the president and wear Make America great again on his hat. Racism haven't been so bad, and I don't know when. He opened up the gates to racism, which it was already there, but people used to hide it. Now they bluntly, Karen's walk up to you, what you doing here? Nickel. You don't belong here. He did that. Now don't get me wrong. Donald Trump was honest. In a lot of ways, and he was crooked in a lot of ways. What I liked about Donald Trump, because he would tell whatever come up, come out. So they can't say, he lied and tricked us. No, he told you exactly what he was. He said, I'm a duck. I'm a duck. And y'all still put me in the house. I didn't lie to y'all. That's what I like about Donald Trump. He was real. He didn't lie to get in the house. He said it pretty much was like a bet. I don't, I didn't did everything under the sun besides running the United States of America. Let me see, can I do it? And he did it. This man didn't follow no agendas. The daily news or whatever he supposed to go over as a president, they said he used to throw it in the trash. I ain't reading that shit. I'm running this house like I want to run it. This is my house. Who house? Donald's house. <laughs> and he for to get back in there if God allows it but he has yet to be prosecuted and they saw 
He took stuff from the White House that was not supposed to be taken. He stole stuff from the White House. They said he sold information to other countries. He should be under the prison. But no. He's still going to go in there. But let uh, Obama had did that. Obama would have got the electric chair. They would him in the electric chair if that Negro would have did half the stuff Donald Trump doing. These are signs of the times. It's just signs. That don't mean it's the end, y'all. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. It's just signs. God give us warnings. Before the storm. He's telling us to get ready. Because he's coming back. It may be a hundred years from now. I don't know. But he's telling us get yourself ready. Because you don't know when I'm coming. I'm going to come like a thief in the night. He, you don't know how he's coming. That's why you got to stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. Stop telling me what your pastor said. And tell me what God said. That's what I want to hear. For now on, when somebody say something, I don't want to hear nothing about your pastor. Don't even mention your pastor when you're talking to me. I don't want to hear what my pastor, I don't give a damn what your pastor said. Because your pastor, nine times out of ten, is leading you to the pit of hell. I don't want to hear nothing about a man. Tell me what God said. And then show me scripture. I'm to the point now, don't even talk to me about God unless you can back it up. Back up what you're saying, then we can talk. Until the end, don't talk to me. But this your girl Nina from Breakable Strong Woman, y'all. Can you please get the likes up? I know I went a little too long. Talked about my daddy, my mama, everybody under the sun. I just had to give a little testimony, man, because... I've been through hell, and I'm still here. I'm still standing, and I still trust God. No matter what I go through, I still trust God. My sister died. My daddy died in 2007. My oldest sister died in 2008 from a heart attack. She had just retired, laid down, take a nap. She didn't wake up. Her daughter, which was my oldest niece, my twin, we looked like twins. She was 35 years old and five years older than her. She laid down. No, that was my sister. I'm, I'm getting confused. My niece, after my sister that laid down and died from a heart attack, we get a call that my niece had cancer. This was December 2007. Right after my mom, after um, 2008, right after my sister died. It's December 2008. My sister died May 2008. They tell us she got six months to live. She died on Father's Day. June 16th, my birthday. Father's Day. Her daddy's only daughter and the baby from ovarian cancer. Two months after that, August 2009, my mother died. She couldn't take losing her partner of 50 plus years. Her oldest daughter she had at 16, so they was like best friends. And her first granddaughter. And in between, she lost her sister-in-law. And right after she died, my mother, her older sister died because she couldn't take losing her baby sister. So I lost six people in 18 months. And I never gave up on God. I still praise and thank you, Father God, for this day. Your will must be done. My son was shot. He survived. He was shot at. He survived. My daughter ended up with leukemia in the midst of my divorce, and I was homeless, living out of a car. And my daughter was in the hospital fighting for her life, and my low-down, no-good husband came and took my car away with everything I had left in the world. I went outside to change my clothes. I was living out of my car, with, up there with my daughter, fighting for her life, and my car was gone. All I had was my sundress on and my sandals. And I fell to my knees and I looked up and I said, Lord, what's next? What you finna do now? Here I am with nothing. You just stripped me down naked. All I got is my dang on sundress and my sandals. And my baby in there dying. 
What's next? And I still went back in that hospital and act like nothing happened. She kept saying, Mama, what's wrong? I said, nothing. Well, everything okay. I didn't have nothing. I had to call a friend. He took me to Walmart to buy me some underwear, y'all. I didn't have nothing. Then he started buying me little things here and there. He helped me get a hotel room. I stayed there for six months. I worked my way out of a hotel room. I saved grind through the Michigan weather. Saved sharing cars with my son, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning in blizzards in Michigan to pick my son up, to take him to work by 7 so I can go to work by 12, and I work from 12 to 12, and my son will catch a ride home in a blizzards living in a hotel, and I saved and got me an apartment. I just feel like giving y'all my testimony. I got an apartment. I stayed there three years. It didn't happen again. I lost everything again. That's why I had a GoFundMe. I still have a GoFundMe. Didn't nobody give nothing to me and my baby girl. My baby girl is 17 now. When I went through my divorce, she was 12. So me and my baby girl, who's 17 and pregnant, because she was running off because of our situation, I kind of blame myself. We in the midst of staying with family, trying to get our own place again. But guess what? I don't doubt God. And guess what? He gave me YouTube. And YouTube is changing my life. So that's who I am. So when y'all say I'm judging people, y'all don't know my story or my pain. I put a GoFundMe up and only 10 people gave to me. They rather talk about me than help me. Out of all the people I didn't help, I was the rock of my family. I'm the baby, but I always had a business, worked jobs, always had a beautiful home, always had brand new cars. I didn't help raise my nieces and nephews. I didn't. I was the rock. This is what I was saying, y'all. Let me go back real quick, and I'm gonna let y'all go. That same church I seen my mom and dad, I, it came back to my remembrance. That same church. My mom and dad was at, and I said, I didn't give my mama nothing. When my mother died, I put my mother away so beautiful. My mother had a Cinderella carriage. It was white and gold, and it was draped with drapes in it, and it had that beautiful pink. Her casket was covered with laylock flowers. The whole front of the church was laylock. She had a white and gold casket. Not only that, we walked out to church. My mother had two white horses and two black horses. She had a carriage behind her that was carrying us, and she had a limo. Because the money that she got from my father passing came to me, which wasn't a lot. She ended up out of $280,000 after all his medical bills, she ended up with like $85,000. And it came to me. And if I could have threw it all over in the box with her, I would have. But let me tell you how the church treated me. How greedy they are. These people have been knowing me since birth. They were calling me saying I owe them from taking off work to sing at her funeral. I never asked them to come. I had to play the organ. You owe me. I had to pay one pastor's son $100 to sing walk around heaven all day because my mother loved him to sing that song. He charged me $150 to see one song. I had to pay the camera crew because my brother was in prison. He's the only son. My mother adored her son. So I had to get it all on footage for my brother and he still won't watch it. I had to pay $300, $300 or $400 to him. This is a deacon of the church. It got so bad with them people ragging me, riding me for money because they thought my mother left me loaded, how I put her away, that I had to go to the pastor and cry and broke down. And he had to make an announcement in church that said, if anybody else reach out to Miss Mayberry about money, they're going to have to see me. These are church folks. They didn't care my mother just died. They wanted some of her money. One of the women of the church been knowing me since birth, y'all. The director of the choir don't speak to me to this day because she said I didn't pay her to take off work to sing at my mother's funeral and she been knowing my mama all her life. 
She don't even speak to me when she see me. When you pay me my money, I said, you go die and go to hell before I pay you. Mm-mm. My mother put in too much time in this church. Y'all to give me a cup of Kool-Aid for my mama. And you think I'm going to pay you to sing that I didn't even ask you to come sing? I didn't ask you to take off work. You should have wanted to come show respect to a woman you've been knowing over 45 years, an elder of the church, a senior of the church. You should have wanted to take off. These church folks, church folks, I struggle to get my life back because my rocks are gone. My mama, my daddy, my sister, I struggle. But God is working it out. So if you are feeling discouraged and you feel like there's no hope, look at me. I'm a walking testimony. My daughter left the hospital cancer-free. The doctor said... We had this new system that we have to empty all her blood out of her body. It's going to take about 45 days. We haven't had nobody fail yet, but it's dangerous. She will be without her immune system for about 10 days, zero immune system. I went in the bathroom and I prayed. Her dad, when I came on, he was crying. I said, what you crying for? He a deacon of his church. What you crying for, deacon? My baby. Where is your faith at? Go ahead and do what y'all have to do for my daughter. And she's going to be one of the ones that walk out of here cancer free in 45 days. Just before my daughter left, after they said it was in benign, she didn't have a trace of cancer. They showed us that 45 days we was there. The danger she was in, they didn't want to tell us. She had lesions on her brain. Her kidneys had failed. She was going blind. They had a trach in my daughter's throat. All kind of stuff had happened to her. They said, do you know how many times we thought we was going to lose your daughter? And we didn't tell you. So we looking like all oh, that stuff was happening because she was still functioning. She was still talking. Her family, her dad family flew in for, um, from the south. It was giving her ginger and, and all kind of remedies and praying. Or we had some, you know, her dad got some praying aunties. And grandmama, they was up there laying hands on my baby. You hear me? They flew in. God, and they was like, no, nah, he can't have this one. You can't have this one. She got a little girl to attend to. And in the midst of her fighting for her life, my grandbaby daddy kidnapped her. I had to go to find my grandbaby in a whole nother city. And the school helped me kidnap my grandbaby back. Because I couldn't tell my daughter, your daughter missing. Your da her daddy didn't bring her back. I don't know where she at. That would have killed her. So I had all this going on on top of being homeless. My daughter and I have an immune system for 10 days. Zero immune system on life support. And when I post her pictures, her graduation, and how she is now and how she was then, people be like, oh, my God. I'm going to put it on my um, YouTube shorts so y'all look out for it. I'm going to... Put her picture before and after and show you what God can do. Okay, I'm going to show y'all. My son got shot in the arm and he's a boxer. And all his tendons was torn. His hand was stuck like this. They told him he would never box again. He would never use his fingers again. I put him in physical therapy and I said, the devil is a liar. You a champ. I had a champ. You go box again, baby. Mom, no, nah, mom, it's just over. One day he came in the kitchen and I was cooking. And he grabbed the milk. Because it was his right hand. And I dropped what I was doing. I'm looking at him. I said, Gino. His name is Eugene. Call him Gino. I said, baby boy. Look how you holding that milk. He looked. And he just started shaking. And he started moving his hands. And he said, oh my God, mama. I can move my fingers. He zipped up his pants. I just had to zip up his pants for him. He grabbed something. He hugged me. He couldn't believe it. I can move my... I said, didn't I tell you? I had a champ. The devil is a liar. No weapon formed against mine will prosper. He can move. He back in the gym now. If y'all look on my YouTube shorts, you will see him boxing. 
He he in the beginning stages again. He's 24 years old. People tell him he's too old. That's another lie. See, he had to go through recovery because he was shot. You can't tell me what God can do. George Foreman proved him wrong when he went back out of retirement. You can't tell me when God got something for you, it's yours. So go look on my YouTube shorts. You will see my baby boy boxing again. This is a brother, a little kid that was shot in his arm. And they said he had never used his hand again. I'm telling you what I know. But let me go, y'all. I've been talking too long. I just got fooled because I, I just can't believe the church. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I just, it's sad, it's sad, man. Woo! Oh, Father God. Let me go, y'all. Y'all have a good evening. I'll read y'all, um, I will read y'all messages accordingly. It's praying time. Please pray. Please pray for me and mine. If y'all want to support me in any kind of way, I have super chats on my channel. I have a cash app. It's dollar sign, capital N-I-N-A. And I think it's 12, 12, 6, 9. I don't know. It's on my page. But I'm not begging. God is my provider. But I'm just saying, if you want to support my channel, because I got a lot of things I want to do, I got to get my life back. I got to get back going. I got a grandbaby, another grandbaby on the way. I got to get my baby in another safe home because she's 17 and pregnant. She had a mental breakdown by, uh, after my divorce. She had another breakdown. We lost my place. She had another breakdown when her big sister had cancer. She had another breakdown when her brother got shot. She the baby. My, my daughter has been through hell as the baby. See, I didn't go through none of that. I feel horrible that I'm allowing her to face these calamities. I'm supposed to be her protector. I feel like a failure, you know, but I'm going to get it right. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Pray for my channel. I have a good heart. I'm a good person, and I'm trying to do good deeds. If I'm doing anything wrong, please forgive me. God is not through with me yet. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Push them likes, please. They're not matching the people on here. Push the likes. Talk to y'all later. Bye.